On a much brighter note, let's move to Netflix. Uh, oh, rising thank heavens. Jeez, that was such a downer on Friday. Q3 beat. Most profitable quarter ever for Netflix, the company with a 15% jump in revenue, adding more than 5 million subs, issuing some upbeat guidance. On the call, Ted Sarandos did dismiss the idea of streaming bundles. We're seeing a lot of our competitors use bundles to find growth in their businesses. And I, I get that. It's a comfortable business model for legacy media companies. Um, and kind of given the narrow scope of the libraries on these services and the fairly limited engagement, it makes sense for them to kind of replicate some of the older media models of uh, kind of creating these bundles. Uh, but what we're, we're focused on is adding more and more value to this package. Guides above on Q4. Next year, Jim, kind of in line for 25. Yeah, but you know, the, the ad, the ad uh, tier's working. It's interesting to mention Trade Desk. Trade Desk is doing some of their ad work. And if you're working with Trade Desk, you're working with the best. They'll figure it out. Uh, so that was really smart. They, this is just so best of breed. The quote that we ran was really, uh, I, I happen to like these guys very much. Sarandos is fabulous. And that quote was so horrible because for us in Linear, because it basically says, you guys don't know what you're doing. Don't ask us to replicate Linear. Anything Linear does is a loser. But he was very polite about it. I'm not, I'm not kidding. I mean, he just says, look, we don't have to bundle because we have great talent. It, it, great, great production. One of the things that I want people to read this conference call because it's very edible. You know, because like, why are we doing well? Well, you know, if you're looking at, at a company like uh, Walmart, and that's a great company, they're doing well because they're giving you merchandise at a low price. That's what these guys are doing. But what's the merchandise? The perfect couple, which everybody watched, and you see the numbers, and you, have, you know, you have, you have, you have almost a billion people on this thing. But everything they have, uh, you know. Like, I, I watched Nobody Wants This. I didn't like it. My wife loved watched, it. We watched the whole I, season. Yeah, my wife loved it. But what, what you see here is, is that every aisle is popular with somebody. And, you know, a sp Spanish story, a Mexican story. This, a, this is a must-read conference call because it shows you a company that's going from disc, diskette, <laughs> to, uh, to, to, to by, by basing cable entirely. And I think that these guys are so darn smart. There's a look at Kristen Bell and Adam Brody there. Uh, series. Uh, Series so getting a huge push. Average engagement, Jim, couple hours a day. Couple hours a day. What well, made me think, like, this is, we're going to talk about work from home, but you're t this is a work from home play. They, the only thing they should be worried about is that people have to go back to work. I, I don't know. I, I think anyone who um, sits around at home and tries to figure out what to do with their spouse, uh, with their significant other, whatever, you go to Netflix because they have something. You don't go to the bundle because the bundle's about cop shows. It's about fires. You've it's never, about you've never liked the Dick Wolf universe of uh, no. legacy. And I happen to like Dick Wolf. He's a good guy. Yeah. But the problem with that, I mean, I once wrote, I was writing a, a screenplay, and I was told that it was too cerebral because no one died, and no one, <laughs> no one was a cocaine addict, and no one was ever in the hospital, and where were the arrests? I said, well, that's not the story. And the guy said, no, that is the story, and yours isn't. <laughs> and I remember, you know, that was the 1981 model. And the networks have stuck by the 81 month. Now, the one thing the networks will do is say, Kramer's completely wrong. But I'm not. Well, speaking of things that are recommended for you, Sarandos did get to AI and the role it's playing yeah. in, yeah. in story selection. Take a listen to that. On the AI side, um, lots of hype, um, good and bad, about how AI is going to impact or transform the entertainment industry. Um, I, I think that the history has been that entertainment and technology have worked hand in hand throughout the history of time. Um, and it's very important, I think, for creators to be very curious about what these new tools are and what they could do. But AI needs to pass a very important test. You know, actually, can it help make better shows and better films? Uh, that is the test. And that's what that's what they got to figure out. We're going to talk later this morning about this note at Amelia's today, looking but, at the, the watershed moments that Ben writes and says we're at. Oh, it's great. Inference. Yeah, I had Reed Hastings on once. Reed was the godfather of this and the, 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 before Sarandos. And he came on. And I said, how did you know that if I liked Scarface, I would like? And he goes, because we have great intuition. But then it turned out that they had great inference. And this is an inference model. And one time, he said, do you ever use our customer service? I said, one time I, I called and I said, I wanted all movies about Stalin. And they came back and they said, we happen to have a gem of a Stalin movie. I said, how did you do that? He said, homework. Now, can you imagine how they've managed to merge AI? The smartest people in the industry are remarkable. They knew AI before AI, but now they've got it. 
And if you speak to Jensen Wong, Jensen tells you that right now we basically have a subpar uh, model of like chat GPT. It's like, you know, eighth grader, whatever. In two years, obviously, it's going to be smarter than us. The people who are going to use their them, they intuit. But if you have intuition and inference, the world is your oyster. And Netflix has that.